One of the biggest things that I can do for the veteran community right now uh, as an LGBTQ individual is be as vocal as I possibly can to break down the stereotype that most people have in their minds of what a veteran is. A veteran is not just uh, every straight white war movie male that you've seen. We come in all shapes, forms, sizes, sexualities, uh, nationalities. For me, like that is also the greatest honor that I carry is to not only say that I'm a veteran of the United States military, but also that I was an openly gay male uh, that knew that I would have to hide a part of myself in order to sign up. And that was a sacrifice that many of us that are part of the community do day in and day out. When I finally got to the point of telling my friends and my soldiers and my family, everyone, uh, about myself, there was just as much fear, if not more, inside of me than when I was 13 and first considered coming out to the world. Um, I, I, I felt that the fear and anxiety uh, was on par with uh, what I felt during deployment, uh, that life and death scenario that you know this choice could be uh, the make or break moment for myself. Um, it, it was uh, genuinely refreshing to have an outpouring of support from uh, my friends and my soldiers, uh, but I, I think I would be lying if I said that that's what I expected. I expected to lose uh, many of the people that uh, I had served with, uh, just because I had spent years and years hearing uh, the opinions of those uh, that I served around, what they thought of people in the LGBTQ community. Uh, I didn't think I was going to be any different, uh, but I was genuinely surprised uh, when so many people uh, went above and beyond to let me know that they respected me and they honored my service. I think one of the uh, largest obstacles uh, that prevent kind of a decrease in the levels of post-traumatic stress disorder in LGBTQ individuals is uh, access. Uh, whether it be self-restriction, that you don't want to go and receive these services because you're fearful of them uh, learning more about yourself or maybe letting that information loose, whatever it is that you do disclose. Uh, but also it's a combination effect. You're, you're already dealing with quite a lot of emotions on the inside uh, as an LGBTQ individual, and then you're dealing with some of the traumatic stress that comes along with military uh, service. Uh, and you don't have many professionals that have a specialized kind of uh, touch when it comes to taking consideration in that audience. Uh, these are somewhat unique circumstances as we began to look at LGBTQ service members serving openly now and then battling with post-traumatic stress. So I think that we definitely should be doing a deep dive into some research materials into how to approach these very complex issues that are going on inside of our servicemen and women. For me, I wanted to be that example for those around me uh, and also to be an example for myself. Uh, so that's what I'm going to put out to you know my fellow brothers and sisters and everything in between in the LGBTQ community is that I want you to be the change that you want to see in the world. If you see that change happening in the military, I want you at the center of it. I feel it's vital to have voices that have not been heard over the generations finally brought to the forefront. And that includes the military sector of our country. So we need those LGBTQ individuals to join so they can rise and become the leaders of tomorrow.